the past we had to transfer multiple embryos in hopes that we would get a woman pregnant. We did have some knowledge as to what IVF is about. Granted, you can know a lot about it, but until you actually do it, um, it becomes a different situation. Many women were, were achieving pregnancy, but, but our twinning and, and triplet rate was really uh, excessive. Uh, approaching 50% uh, in, in uh, younger women. And this bothered us and we felt like we could do better uh, for those patients. Multiple gestations are hampered with health risks to the mom, health risks to the baby, certainly additional economic um, hardships and challenges for the families as they're dealing with multiple babies at once. For the mother, there's increased risks of premature labor requiring bed rest and, and leaving time from work. Uh, there's increased risks of needing a cesarean delivery, increased risks of hypertension, diabetes. My husband and I are clinical psychologists and specifically we're clinical neuropsychologists, so we're very concerned about the brain. We were well aware that multiples could result in a higher risk for physical impairment like cerebral palsy or mental impairment like learning disabilities or low intellect. One of the most difficult decisions that, that couples have to make is whether or not to reduce a pregnancy, say from triplets or quadruplets, most often down to twins. The risk of putting more than one egg in is of course multiples, but then that then they can split and you can go from multiples to triplets or quadruplets. I just, I couldn't do it. I would have to risk selectively reducing and I just couldn't make that decision. The policy of single embryo transfer here reduces the chance that a couple would be faced with that decision. In many cases, we no longer need to transfer multiple embryos with in vitro fertilization. We can transfer a single embryo and achieve a high pregnancy rate and, and importantly a safe pregnancy for that woman. For the women who qualify for single embryo transfer in our program, they have a 68% chance of delivering a child after the fresh transfer. If you added in the deliveries from frozen embryo transfers, ultimately after one egg retrieval, over 80% of the women that have qualified for single embryo transfer deliver. At our first meeting, we discussed with them at length the adverse consequences of multiple gestations. Often the patients, after they hear about these risks, are quite interested in doing single embryo transfer. In my case, with my smaller uterus, I would have to be faced with that choice or be faced with a really high risk of miscarrying. So the clear choice for us, we didn't even question it, is single embryo cell implant and I really feel like I'm in the right place and good hands to do that. We don't feel that everyone is a candidate for single embryo transfer. In fact, we've set up some guidelines in our program. So single embryo transfer is good for high prognosis couples and here we define that as women who are 37 years of age or less, um, have never failed a previous IVF cycle and have a high quality embryo on day five. The embryos have to be good or excellent quality blastocysts. They have to have several cells in the trifectoderm of the blastocyst that would then go on to the placenta, as well as several cells in the inner cell mass that would become the fetus proper. We chose the University of Iowa because their uh, single embryo transfer program is so high, and we thought it had a great rate of success, and we just want one child for financial reasons. We were very happy to get our single embryo transfer for the biggest part is that now that we've finally achieved our pregnancy, we want it to be, have the least amount of complications. My husband and I were in total agreement on the single embryo transfer because we wanted one healthy child. That was our goal. One important aspect of an IVF program that a patient should be aware of and, and perhaps even ask about is the, the safeguards that they take to be certain that 
uh, everything is done correctly. We don't rely on names for identification solely. We rely on a case number with the name and the medical record number. That case number is on every single culture dish, on the incubator label, and on every straw that we use for freezing embryos. So it's a unique identifier that we feel extremely confident is the best way to make sure that we don't mix up embryos or cases in our lab. Here at the University of Iowa, our mission is changing medicine, changing lives. We are not just a fertility clinic, but we're also a research institution. And we're able to collaborate with uh, basic scientists here within the university and with other universities to try and improve the process. In vitro fertilization has been a major success story in the field of medicine. It's an area that not too many years ago people thought was impossible, that it would never happen. And now it's evolved to the point that one in a hundred births in the United States is the result of in vitro fertilization. We can freeze the twin and transfer that embryo in a subsequent cycle. They can have their two babies, but they can have the babies one at a time. That's going to lead to the optimal outcome. We're just looking at ways of, of improving those outcomes, getting even higher pregnancy rates, and, and making the process even safer uh, through uh, clinical trials and through uh, research that we're doing. Here at the University of Iowa, single embryo transfer is a point of pride. We do believe that one baby at a time is the ultimate outcome of in vitro fertilization.